Another important concept in auditing is professional skepticism or maintaining the attitude of professional skepticism. Maintaining an attitude of professional skepticism means that auditors recognize that circumstances may exist that cause the financial statements to be materially misstated. So that means that as auditors, when we are presented with evidence, when we are when we are presented with representations from the management, we do not readily accept them at face value. So we have to consider that such misrepresentation as that such representation rather or such evidence could be misstated. So that is why we have to assess with questioning mind the validity or the reliability of such an evidence or representation and we have to corroborate it or compare it with other existing evidence that might support or contradict the evidence or representation presented by management. So that's what we mean by being professionally skeptic. So we have to bring this attitude of a questioning mind or critical mind assessing whether each evidence or representation provided to us are actually fair. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that we will assume that management is automatically dishonest, nor the management is of unquestioned honesty. So meaning to say, when we talk about professional skepticism, although we mentioned earlier that we have to have a critical mind, so we have to assess, for example, the evidence being provided to us, it doesn't necessarily mean that we will assume that the honest is dishonest. Okay? So we are... Uh, that the target of our professional skepticism is not the personality of the management but rather the possibility that the evidence or the representation might be misstated because it can happen that the management is honest or the client personnel is honest however he or she might have committed mistake in preparing the information so it's still possible that such representation may contain misstatement even if the uh, management or the client personnel is honest. Another thing is that even if we have previous experience with the client being, for example, honest and uh, proper in giving or providing evidence, we also do not assume that that unquestioned honesty will no longer, will no longer warrant us to to perform audit procedure related to that evidence being provided by, for example, honest management or client personnel. So even if there's a history of, uh, for example, uh, honesty on the part of the client, as mentioned earlier, it's possible that mistakes could happen. So that is why regardless whether, for example, the management is dishonest or honest, we have to perform procedures to validate the evidence or representation being provided to us. So we do not judge the personality of our client, but rather auditing standards require us to be critical of the evidence and the representation being provided to us auditors. Now take note also that we can use our past experience to assess the honesty and integrity of the client management. Okay, so this uh, this assessment may actually help us in uh, in uh, making professional judgment for example in certain assessment that we perform in our audit so however again no, as i mentioned earlier it is not sufficient it is not sufficient that the client is honest is honest to warrant us omitting any procedures that we have to perform so regardless whether the client is honest we still have to perform procedures that would validate the evidence or the representation provided by the management. And then, next. So this one, uh, we mentioned earlier, a belief that management is honest, so does not relieve the auditor the need to maintain professional skepticism. So as we mentioned, even if we believe that the client is honest, it doesn't mean that we do not have to perform procedure anymore. So because even if the client personnel or management is honest, it's still possible that the representation or evidence could, mean, could uh, contain misstatement. Now, what's so important about this professional skepticism? Okay, so this is very important. So because uh, 
these misstatements, if we are not uh, too critical about it, could affect our opinion ultimately. So because if these misstatements were not identified by us, then it could result to an appropriate opinion that we will issue later on. So that is why as auditors, we are required by our auditing standards to maintain our professional skepticism, specifically when there are evidence that contradicts other pieces of evidence that we have obtained. We also be, should be alert whenever there is an information that brings into question the reliability of documents and responses to be used as evidence. And also, we have to be alert when there are conditions that may indicate possible fraud. Okay, so also known as the fraud risk factors. Or in layman's term, we have uh, what we call these uh, red flags. Finally, the benefit of maintaining or the benefits of maintaining professional skepticism would help reduce the risk of, number one, overlooking unusual circumstances. When we maintain our professional skepticism, so we will, we will reduce the risk or likelihood that we might overlook unusual circumstances that would signal no, error or misstatements on the financial statements. So we will also uh, reduce no, the risk of overgeneralizing when we make our conclusion or when we draw our conclusion. And finally, professional skepticism also reduces the risk of using inappropriate assumption when we design the nature, time, and extent of our audit procedures and when we evaluate our results. So therefore, this attitude of professional skepticism greatly helps the auditor achieve our objectives. Next, another important concept is the concept of professional judgment. So when we say professional judgment, this is the application of the relevant knowledge, training, and experience within the context provided by auditing, accounting, and ethical standards when we reach decisions about courses of actions that are appropriate in the circumstances of the audit engagement. Now, in many areas of the audit, we have to use or we have to exercise our professional judgment. Most often than not, auditing standards would not provide us clear and uh, fast rules when, uh, there, when, uh, when uh, choosing, for example, a particular decision about a certain aspect of our procedure in audit engagement. So there are no black and white rule or there's no always black and white rule on what to do in specific uh, procedure in performing audit engagement. So that is why we will have to rely on our training, we will have to rely on our knowledge, we will have to rely with our experience with similar company or uh, experience from prior audit from prior audit uh, of the same company in reaching about the uh, decisions, no, regarding courses of action in performing our audit engagement. So there's a lot of application of professional judgment. That is why as auditors, we have to continue to expand our knowledge. We have to continue our uh, professional development. So we have to perform more engagement for us to be able to have this uh, kind of professional judgment that will uh, respond appropriately to more complex uh, problem that we might encounter as we take on more audit engagement or as we take on more senior roles in the audit team. So that is why this professional judgment is also considered as the hallmark of auditing. So because of the significant reach of this concept or of this, uh, what we call this uh, professional judgment in the performance of our duty as auditor. Okay, so in fact, where do we use uh, specifically professional judgment in audit engagement? So I mentioned, uh, I mentioned, uh, uh, I mentioned uh, earlier that uh, the application of professional judgment in audit engagement is uh, very wide, no? So far-reaching. So what are those areas wherein we need to exercise professional judgment? So we have the following uh, some of the following uh, areas wherein we have to exercise professional judgment such as 
in establishing is establishment of materiality and in the assessment of risk so when we establish materiality in performing our audit so we use professional judgment so likewise when we assess the risk of material misstatement we also use professional judgment we also use professional judgment in determining the nature timing extent of our procedures so in determining for example our uh, sample size when we determine the nature or what type of procedure that we have to perform, so we have to use also our professional judgment. We also use professional judgment in evaluating whether the, the evidence that we have obtained are already sufficient and appropriate. So nothing in our auditing standards will tell you that when you obtain X number of documents, that's enough. So none in our auditing standards would uh, mention such kind of rule. So it will, de it will depend on our professional judgment whether the evidence that we have gathered would already be sufficient and appropriate. So finally, we also use professional judge judgment in evaluating the judgment itself of the management now regarding estimates, for example, in financial statements. So we also use our judgment to evaluate the estimates, the judgment made by the management on the financial statements so that is why we mentioned earlier so these professional judgments is a lot of application so when it comes to performance of audit procedures